this video is a continuation from the previous video. Now we've talked already a little bit about um, three-point lighting um, and that's used in context to uh, portraiture where you have your key light which is your main light your fill light which helps soften the opposite side shadows um, and then your backlight where necessary to help separate your subject from the background um, and here's just another diagram for those different types of lights um, key light, you know, it's just basic, it's basically the, the main light. It's a principal illuminator. Um, there's something called softbox and, um, beauty dish that are some of the lights used as key lights in a studio because they're, they're, they soften the light. They help make the light that falls on skin, um, works better if it's not harsh, if it's diffused and, we often will put a softbox or use a beauty dish to help refract, reflect, bend the light in a way so that it's diffused. Um, and then where you put it generally, right? We put it generally 15 to 45 degrees overhead and 15 to 45 degrees off the main camera. This is not carved in stone. You are still in control of where you think the light looks best. I have done um, portrait sh shoots and we moved, I moved the lights around for every person. Um, we, we did a, a group shot or we did a group of people that we shot and this, their skin tone ranged from almost as white as this, this is paper to um, very, very dark black. And so we had to um, make adjustments with the lights because we couldn't control um, other things. And the person who was working the camera um, wasn't really familiar with the, the settings to change the brightness. But also, even if they were, um, it was easier for me to adjust the lights than it was for them to adjust the ISO and make other adjustment ra ratios from that. So know that you can still move your lights around to where you need them to be. And then th these are, you know, if you look at it, like you're looking down from the plan view and this is your subject, not an eye here. <laughs> and it's a clock. Right, you can, for your key light, you can move it to any one of these locations. I mean, you can move it here. I mean, if your subject isn't facing the camera and you they're rotated, you can put it over here. I mean, it's it it it's completely up to you. I mean, you can go 430, 425, right? So really all of these are possible. And then the fill light is, as I mentioned earlier, it's just mostly to, to keep the shadows from being too dark. You're, it's keeping your your overall shot from being high key. So um, you want to put the the fill light um, roughly 85 to 30, 135 degrees from your key light, but you can move that around too. The whole goal is with it is to just reduce harshness. And then if you have people who um, you're shooting that are older, Fill light can help soften the wrinkles. And then just here's an example, and you can see the degree between them is roughly 95-ish here. Okay, we've seen this one before, just as a, a, a reminder of how much fill light do you want, you know, depends on the outcome. For like school portraits, it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. <clears throat> Um, but in general, a good starting point is the, the one to two ratio. Um, our backlights create an edge around our subject. We would want to help separate them from the background. And this is an a idea of what that looks like. And again, the, diff the backlight creates this distinction that helps separate the object from the background. Um, hair light, 
backlight. Um, they're usually you, you use one or the other, but you can use both. Um, hair light is generally about three feet above the head, directly behind on the model, s just slightly hitting down the on the top of the head and the shoulders. And this was intended. This backlight was actually is more of a side backlight <laughs> that was meant to highlight and separate him from the background. Okay, so we're going to talk about broad lighting versus short lighting, and it, it it's how you light the face, okay? So the face has a broad side, which is the widest part of the face from the nose to the ear, and then the short side, which is the side of the face turned away from the camera. Short lighting makes the face appear thinner, and it's the way to go for most subjects. But broad lighting works best for very thin faces if you don't want them to if you don't want that to be emphasized, okay? So short lighting, best for most faces because it creates a slimming effect. And here's the camera, here's the key light, and this is a diffuse light. And here the person's nose is pointed towards this direction. And so their eyes, you know, their eyes are kinda, they can look back at the camera. The eyes are kind of looking this way towards the side of the camera the side of the light, but then you can see where their nose is pointed. So they're standing here, but the head is turned so that this area is where the camera is pointed. And here's another example of what that looks like. And here are some end results of that. Right, you see their nose, the camera is pointed here, her nose is this way. The camera's pointed here, her nose is turned that way camera's here, her nose is turned even more that way. Okay, So those are all examples. Now broad lighting, as you can see, is the nose in short lighting was pointed this way, is turned the other way. So the light is here, reflectors here, but the nose is now pointed off in this direction. You can see there. And then here are some examples of that. And so when you practice with this, you'll be able to answer that question. <laughs> uh, I put them in there a second time for some reason. Okay, so this is, if we go back and, that's why, now I know I have this in here. Okay, so the light is here, and that's what it looks like with just one light. And so that's one of the things I would recommend doing. It's just, just using a lamp. Have have someone, or it doesn't even have to be a person. I mean, it could be I don't know, something, anything, any object, and and move the lamp around the room and to see, and take the lamp, take the lampshade off, and just move it around the clock and take a picture and see what that light looks like. And this is now right. We're now moving the the light from three o'clock to four o'clock. Five o'clock, six o'clock. And then obviously it works back the other way. Seven would be the same as five, eight would be the same as four, nine would be the same as three, okay? Um, and then here's uh, five o'clock lighting without fill. Here it is with fill. Now, here's, here's something that always drives me nuts. You're not going to be able to completely stop this with that intensity of lighting, but you can greatly reduce it by moving the fill closer this way and the main light closer this way. It will help shorten that shadow because right now that bugs, that bugs me personally. I mean, most people wouldn't notice it, but that shadow just looks like there's something on her face. I don't... You want some shadow, but yeah, I, I think you can soften it quite a bit there. Um, and then here you are with the backlighting. This is where it's just the, the, the direct light on her head. Here the backlight has been softened with a diffuse box, and you still have the highlights on her shoulders, but her hair is separated without that harsh white line. And that's just by diffusing that backlight. And then you can change the background. 
Everything's a variable. Hard versus soft key light. And this is done with a diffuser. When it, whenever you see hard, it's the direct bulb. It's like, it's like go in a room that doesn't have any sort of a lampshade or cover on a light, turn the light on, you know, like one of those bulbs hanging from the, from the ceiling. And you're going to get this hard light. This is the reason we use lampshades and covers to lights. Um, it's because it creates this softer, more pleasant looking light. <clears throat> And we talk about distance in the past, and here you can see an example of it, right? This is if the light source is close versus if it's further away. Now, if she's in a television show, we want to go close. If we're filming for a movie and we want there to be a little bit of drama or mystery, we're going to move it further away. Just depends you know that's the hard thing you know people in in art will say what's the right answer and it depends it depends on the context what are you trying to achieve okay so this is a woman being that actually looks like a classroom here it's not um but it looks like it um so th this is a woman being filmed for an interview and she's being lit from this side and from the lights in the room okay this is the available light and you see it's not very flattering here they changed <laughs> they changed everything and you can see the light now the main source of light is in front of her and the way you do that is have her face the window, at least this side of her face, closer to the window. And turn off the overhead lights. And here you just move it around and see what happens. And that's what I always recommend. Just try moving around and see what happens. Okay, so um, this is a lab if you want to try your hand at this. Obviously, you're not shooting this, but um, or you're not turning this in for a grade. This is just for, this is just a, an example of what you can do for practice um, for um, this, to go with this PowerPoint. Just practice your portraiture, right? Go through this PowerPoint. You have them all, all in Blackboard for reference. Um, and you can go through them more slowly, look at them, do some research. They're there for you just to use as a resource. Um, and practice. Way to get good at this. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Anyway, so this is, we're at a runway on this one. And um, let me know if you have any questions.